Hi, everyone. Um, so, hands up if you've heard of the BBC. Good. Everybody just about. Hands up if you've heard of Unruly. Oh, more than I thought. That was fantastic news, but not that many. So I'm just going to explain um, who, who I'm really is and what I'm kind of doing here today. So um, I'm a co-founder of I'm really, We're a video ad technology company. Uh, we're a global platform for social video advertising. Um, what does that mean? Uh, essentially, that means we help the biggest brands go viral on the internet with their video ads. So if you've ever seen any, uh, let's think, dancing roller babies, body popping chickens, uh, singing kitties, moonwalking ponies, uh, that's our technology that's getting the video uh, spread out uh, far and wide across the social web. We founded in 2006. Uh, we're in 15 different offices now across 12 countries. Uh, just opened in Australia. Uh, so bear with me if I'm looking a little bit bleary. It's because I'm kind of operating across lots of time zones at the moment. Uh, so what I'd like to talk through today are some of the trends that we're seeing in digital video advertising. And in terms of ad spend and money and where it's shifting to and what the big growth areas are, uh, it's all about mavens. Uh, so these big maven categories is where we're seeing a, a lot of growth in ad spend. So what are the maven categories? You're not going to, you know, there's no surprises here. Mobile, huge growth. Video, huge growth. Native, um, who understands uh, what I mean when I talk about native advertising? Do you know, it's so funny because um, some of the, yeah, there's a lot of jargon uh, and some of it doesn't travel very well. Native advertising is one bit of jargon. Uh, basically, native advertising is ads that are um, like content. So they look like content, they're contained within the content stream, uh, and often they can be very high quality, done well, high quality. Some badly different story. And then social, uh, the S in Mavens. So these are all the areas that we're seeing massive growth. Uh, and I'm really, we're very much about helping brands create fantastic ads that people want to share on social, uh, that are distributed in native formats. Uh, and of course, it's video. So the big trend we're seeing, and we've been seeing for a while now, is content shock. This is the exponential growth of content. Now, partly marketers are to blame for this. Content marketing has massively increased. Uh, it's increased for good reasons, uh, because you can get a fantastic return on investment with content marketing. Um, but 25 million posts a day, marketers are pumping out there. Plus, we're all talking to each other on social. We're everywhere. We're on our we're content streams, Twitter feeds, Facebook feeds, new babies, new toys, anything that we want want to say, just talking, talking, talking. And what this means is we've reached an era of content shock. Uh, we've reached our, our capacity, our limit for being able to take in and consume any more content. And it's funny because it's not about technological bandwidth. It's not about fiber. It's about kind of our mental capacity and our ability uh, to take in more. This is a huge challenge. It's a huge challenge for anyone who's a content maker and wants to get their content seen uh, and wants to get their content shared on social. Another challenge and another trend is speed. So creating, distributing content at the speed of social. Uh, this is becoming harder than ever before because of the proliferation of channels out there. So where do you go if you want to distribute your content quickly? Why is it important? Well, because social sharing happens extremely quickly. Uh, and you can basically see the growth of mobile video consumption uh, when you look at this. So if you go back to 20, uh, 2013, 22% of shares occurred within the first three days. So that's a video being uploaded within three days, 22% of all sharing activity have, has happened. Fast forward to 2015, 44% of shares have happened within the first three days. Move to Facebook, it's a lot higher than that. Uh, so on Facebook, it's over 80% of all shares have happened within the first three days. So social velocity, accelerating world, big challenge if you want to get your content uh, discovered and shared on social. Uh, in kind of in ad land at the moment, um, one of the big trends is the viewability debate. Uh, this is all about making sure your content gets seen. Is anybody actually watching it? You know, or is it below the fold? Is it tucked away in a corner and no one's actually there seeing it? Is it on the screen? Uh, there are a lot of conflicting standards around viewability at the moment, um, but this is part of a bigger trend and uh, an important challenge that we face in digital advertising, which is about standardizing metrics. So if you talk to Facebook and ask them what a view is and how they measure a view, you, they'll do it differently from YouTube, who'll do it differently from Twitter, who'll do it differently from lots of other platforms. So standardization of metrics is key. Uh, a lot of discussion uh, about this. 
Facebook versus YouTube. Uh, this has been such an interesting battle, and watching it unfold over last year and into this year uh, has just been spectacular. So we saw a big increase last year in the number of views taking place on Facebook. This was for lots of reasons. Facebook uh, changed the way they integrated video into the content stream. They had their auto-playing video coming down in the content stream. Uh, they launched their ad network within the content stream, their in-feed ads. Uh, and then they also made their view count public. So there were lots of moves during the year where you could see Facebook you know, laying its stake in the ground for video. Uh, the first moment, we track, we track all shares, all social activity across Facebook, across Twitter, across YouTube, across the blogosphere. And the first moment when we saw the watershed uh, was the Ice Bucket Challenge. Uh, and this is a great example of Facebook being the center of all that video activity. Uh, you know, 10x the number of views on Facebook that we, that we saw on YouTube. So big moment, big shift. And a lot of ad dollars at stake, as we saw. You know, video is on big maven categories. So we'll see this battle continuing. In terms of content uh, and how advertisers are responding to content shock, we're seeing a lot more emotional advertising. Uh, and this is brands that want to make you laugh, they want to make you cry, they want to make you buy. Uh, and the way to do that is to get an intense emotional response. Uh, so one of our products um, really is called ShareRank, and it's basically the science behind the sharing. And it algorithmically predicts the virality of content before it's launched. Um, so we can say with 80% certainty across, across the global algorithm, 90% certainty across the local market algorithms, how shareable a piece of content is, why it's going to be shared, who it's going to be shared with. And what we found, there's over 100 variables, but what we found is the most important variables for sharing is emotional intensity. And this isn't just about making somebody smile. Uh, it's about making someone ha, laugh out loud, or gasp, or feel the hairs rise on the back of their neck, or make them cry. So that intense emotional connection is the key. Uh, to, well, it's the key to lots of things. It's the key to shareability, but there's also strong correlation between emotional intensity and profitability. Uh, so hence advertisers really getting in uh, on this emotional advertising. So another trend we're seeing is the content stack uh, and bridging the gap between the programmatic ad tech stack and the content stack. So the ad industry has done some great stuff over the last couple of years. They're building out programmatic, making these pipes super shiny. So now we can do fantastic targeting. We can targeting in real time on a per impression basis. We can reach people wherever they are. Um, that's all great. But if the content that's going through those pipes is shit, then it's just worth nothing because you can target the right user at the right time and on the right device, but if the content is wrong, um, then what is the point of that? Uh, so I think one of the big trends we're going to continue to see uh, is the content stack being built out. So making sure that you've got, well, there's lots of things to make sure about with the content stack, but making sure the research, the strategy, and the ideation has happened in the first place. So that your, your content you're creating supports the overarching strategy in a multi-screen, multi-channel way. Content production, content testing, this is absolutely key. There's so much kind of A-B testing you can do. The testing we do with ShareRank often weeds out quite a few videos that look fantastic, uh, but then you test them and you see they're very polarizing, or you see actually they're not quite as funny as you thought they were. So that's really important. Formats, getting the content right for the formats is key. So many different ad formats now. Uh, you look at the proliferation of TV programming, the formats there. In advertising, it's just the same. Five seconds, six seconds, 15 seconds for mobile, for desktop. And there's all kind of different technical considerations across them. So there's a lot of content there that needs to be created. And then you have the meta creatives. This is about getting the right title, the right thumbnail, the right description, the kind of ancillary content that works with the video and really drives engagement. And then off you go. Then when you've got that great content, whoosh, then you can ping it along uh, through the programmatic ad stack. And hopefully then you have a marriage of fantastic content and really strong targeting capability. So we're going to see that bridge happening soon. The millennial shift. Uh, and this is something um, I know is really interesting, sometimes troubling, sometimes challenging uh, to broadcasters. They're changing habits. Uh, we commissioned a white paper. Uh, we just launched it yesterday, so we're really excited uh, on TV broadcasters uh, and TV promos in particular and the millennial shift. Uh, the reason we did this is we work with lots of broadcasters and they're our clients. Uh, so we, um, we distribute their ads across digital uh, and they're also looking to us to advise them on how they can manage the digital transformation and how they can reach millennials, how they can get millennials to uh, share and get word of mouth around their promos. Uh, the findings were absolutely fantastic and some of these things will be you know, no surprise to you. 
Um, but what we found is happiness, hilarity, and nostalgia are the key emotional triggers for millennials. Uh, obviously, a huge sweeping statement. It varies by gender, by wherever you are, time of day. But a general broad sweeping statement, happiness, hilarity, nostalgia um, are very powerful for reaching millennials. Shock doesn't work well with millennials because it turns out they're really hard to shock. So you, your shock quotient has to be so high to get them sharing. It's often potentially offensive to other parts of the audience. Uh, Multi-screen storytelling. Um, so across all screens, millennials travel, they roam, and the stories need to travel too. Uh, what we were surprised by, though, was the laptop. So 59% of millennials are watching TV promos on their laptops. That's higher than mobile, and it's much higher than any of the other devices. So the laptop is like this secret device that doesn't really get talked about very much, um, but it's very powerful uh, for reaching a millennial audience. And then control, what they want more than anything Anything is control, uh, hence the move away from linear, hence the move towards choosing what they watch, when they want to watch it. This is important for broadcasters, but it's really important for advertisers as well. Uh, one big mistake that you see lots of advertisers make is they think they can just transfer what they did on TV onto digital. Create a 30-second ad, bang it out, broadcast it to everybody, and Bob's your uncle doesn't work with millennials. They don't like to be told what to watch. They like to choose for themselves. And this is why in advertising, social video advertising is really important. Create ads that they want to watch, and ideally ads that are good enough that they want to share, and then give them the choice. So skippable pre-roll rather than forced pre-roll. Ideally, user-initiated, outstream ads. And then if you get it right, really get it right, and you get lots of word of mouth, then you get a lot of earned media on top of that. Uh, what we found uh, in, in this uh, study also was that if a millennial has a TV promo shared with them, 80% of those millennials will go on to watch the show. So there's a, you know, the action there is really strong. The correlation between being shared a promo and going on to watch it is strong. However, they're much more li less likely to share it in the first place. So the bar is high for millennials to share. Difficult to get the content right. So who is getting it right? Uh, in our study, uh, we tested, we ran the analytics uh, across you know, thousands of video ads, uh, and we were looking at which ones were resonating with millennials versus the national representative population. We did it in Europe, we did it in the US. These are the US results. Uh, so what you've got here is the most shared TV promo, America's Funniest Home Videos, the most shared TV promo of H2 2014, and then the most shared TV promo for millennials uh, in H214. Uh, so one is Cats, and the other is Jimmy Kimmel and Candy. Uh, I'd love to show one of these to you, so let's have a show of hands and let me know which one you'd uh, like to watch. So if you want to watch Cats, hands up. And if you want to watch Jimmy Kimmel, hands up. Excellent. And, and here you've just, you've just disproved one of the myths. One of the myths of viral video uh, is that all you need is cats. Uh, show someone a cat and they'll want to watch or they'll want to share. Not true. That's, there's a survivor fallacy there. We know famous cats, but there are many, many other cats that, are, that we don't know so well. And they just sit and no one watches them and no one shares them. And my cat is one of those cats. Uh, so I'm really pleased that you haven't chosen cats today and you've chosen Jimmy Kimmel. Let's, Alex, let's take it away. It's time now for our beloved holiday tradition. Hey, Jimmy Kimmel, I told my kids I ate all their Halloween candy. Last night I ate all your candy. Why? Because it was good. You ruined my life! Yeah, we ate it all while you were sleeping. No! Oh, man! I'm going to eat it all. I'm going to eat it all. J Jimmy Kimmel said I should eat all your candy. Okay? Okay, I'm going to eat it all. Yeah, I'm going to eat it. Okay, this is for me. Well, let's see. Jimmy Kimmel said I should eat this too. Okay. Okay, I think I'll eat it. All of it? All of it. Every single bite? Yeah. You must have a bellyache. <laughs> I got hungry last night. Eat an apple! <laughs> Daddy and I ate all of your candy.
Those aren't real drawers, buddy. Get out. Uh, so there we go. Uh, that's some of the findings from the white paper. If you want to know more about what, what you need to do to get TV promos shared, watched on digital, um, then you can go to the unruly.co website and download the white paper there. Uh, thanks very much for listening. <laughs>